Hi Kwezi, it's Ian Wilson from Spatial Modeling Solutions. We chatted on the phone briefly earlier. I just wanted to do a little demo or demonstration um, uh, video for you on, on QGIS. Uh, I'm just going to open a project which I opened previously. Uh, let's just open this one. Okay, so I've just so this is just a little demonstration project which I sometimes put together um, in my tutorials, and it's a piece of land that uh, we're, we we identified for potential development, and then as town planners will come in and will will identify existing features on the land, and then um, try and integrate or or create a, a layout to fit on here. So so I'm going to skip over the the geoprocessing side of things. And I'm just going to show you um, the steps of adding a, a new layer and then um, uh, well converting that, that layout uh, into a polygon and then attaching data to it. So, so yeah, so we've assumed that all this data has been captured and um, geoprocessed and then we've got a, a layout which has been, been created in a CAD package by the, the planners or the, or the uh, engineers, whoever does the, plan, uh, the planning work. So I'm just going to browse for that now. It is a DXF. Um, okay, so this is a, an example of why QGIS is a very powerful program. It, is that it's compatible with many different file formats. So I mean, there's our Esri shape files, our CSVs, our CAD DXF. That's one we're going to open now. But then you also see there's a whole bunch of other file formats, uh, vector formats, which we can open. Uh, map info. Uh, MicroStation. There's not many packages um, that can open MicroStation files, so so it's great from that point of view. It's um, it's uh, it gives you a big functionality in opening lots of different files, and then of course you can save them out as a different file format. So you can go from DXF to shapefile. So you import one, save it as something else. So in this example, I'm just going to open this little CAD package or this this CAD file. So it's over here somewhere. There it is, called Layout DXF. Let's open that one. Yep. And our projection is Transverse Mercator WGS84. And if I just have a look here, we want to open the lines. So let's say OK. And just tell it again. Yes, that's the coordinate reference system we want to use. And there we go. You can sort of see it. It's been added here. It's like a light, a light green layer. If I just turn off my aerial photo, You'll be able to see it better. Well, maybe I should make it a dark blue. Dark blue is easy to see on a white background. There we go. So that's the, the layout. So now that's a DXF. It's just a series of lines, CAD lines. Now we want to convert this into a polygon so that we can attach data to it. Because if you look at it now, if you open the attribute table, there's nothing in it and there's no polygons just lines. Okay, so we want to convert that to polygons. So that's easy enough. We just go to our vector menu and our geometry tools. We're going to go lines to polygons and our input layer is that new layer we've just added and we're going to create a new layer saving it to a file. Uh, let's call it the layout shape. We're going to write over the top of this one. So we're going to replace that. Yep. Run. Oh, it just exported the selected one. So I need to deselect, deselect all the selected folders, or image, deselect all the selected features. Let's just try that again. So where are we going? Geometry tools, lines to polygons. Okay, same again. We're going to use our layout and save to file. I'm just going to call it something else in case uh, it doesn't like writing over the existing file and we'll say run there we go so now it's got uh, these lines have been converted into polygons so now if we open well if we if, if we click on these these features it'll select the polygons there we go it's selecting a whole bunch uh, because I'm zoomed out quite fast if I just zoom in a bit closer and use my identify tool uh, there we go so now these are all separate polygons so now what we can do is we can attach um, data to these these uh, features, and then um, 
color up accordingly. So for instance, we want to attach the CAD or the, the earth number or the property ownership data or the, the zoning scheme. We can attach that to this and then color up on that zoning scheme as an example. So let's quickly do that now. And the first thing we need to do is assign uh, a data um, to this new layer from another layer. So let's just add this other layer that we're going to use. Let me just deselect this. Let's click off here. There we go. So we're going to add another layer now. And it is a shape file this time. And I wonder if it's in that folder. So we look for every shape file. Text. Yes, okay. So now this is a point file which I created earlier. And this point file is just full of the, the, the actual CAD numbers. Okay, so now we've got a point file. And then underneath it, we've got the polygon file. So we want to attach the data from the point file to the polygon. And this will become clearer in the in the tutorials we do. But this is just a, yeah, as I said, it's just an example um, of me showing you how, uh, or what kind of a package QGIS is um, as it relates to a potential query you might have as a town planner. Right, so now I'm going to attach it, assign data by location. So we want to use this one. So it's a data management tool. We're joining attributes by location. So our target layer, the layer we want to join to is our polygon from lines layer. And the join vector layer, which we're pulling information from, is the text layer. Okay. And where a polygon contains a point, it's going to pull that data through. So that's why we select that option. That's the predicate. We run it. And it asks us for our coordinate reference system again. So it's gone ahead and created a new layer. Now if we open this layers attribute table, it's added a field. And in that field per record where it intersected, it's got the CAD data from, from the, um, the point file that we pulled through. Now we can go ahead and join attribute data from a outside table, uh, spreadsheet, or a CSV to this. So this we're going to use this CAD text as our unique identifier. And um, this is something, I mean, the SG number might be a unique identifier that you use. Or if you're just working in a, an allotment, you could just use the, the earth number. But then obviously across two different allotments, you might have earth numbers uh, duplicated and um, duplicate um, unique identifiers won't work. So it does have to be a unique key. So we're going to do that now quickly. So let's join. Uh, so to join, we first need to, to add the, the, la the layer we want to join or the spreadsheet we want to join. And it is a CSV. Where is it? CSV. And I think it's an output folder. Test yeah. This is the one I created earlier. So let's add that. There we go. So it's added this little uh, new uh, attribute table. If we open it up. So this is a whole lot of dummy information, uh, just for this example. Now here is that uh, unique identifier I was talking about. It's the CAD text field. It's identical to the one that we have in the in the actual layer. So now we're going to join up using that um, that field. So if we go back into our layer, our new layer we want to join on. Join to. We go to properties. We're going to say joins. We want to create a new join. And we're joining from our test layer, or our test uh, CSV, which we added. The join field is CAD text, you'll remember. So it's CAD text, and it's also CAD text in this one. We're happy with that. And we say OK. There, our join's been successful. We say OK. Now, if we go back into that attribute table, it'll have a ton of other information. So now we've got a, a spreadsheet or an outside spreadsheet which is linking through in QGIS to our new layer which we created. So now we can go ahead and color up on something else. So oh, we can um, identify properties that are above a certain value, highlight those, or we can, uh, if there's a zoning scheme, we can say all the single residential uh, let's color up on land use. Let's see what that land use uh, feature does. So if we right click and say properties, style, and we're going to use a categorized uh, symbology. And the column we want to use was usage. Usage, classify. Okay, there we go. So a bunch of random colors have been selected. Let's apply those. I don't love these colors, but it's uh, it's going to work. So there's. 
Uh, single dwelling residential is a dark blue. Uh, residential vacant land uh, might be the green. So obviously, this, as an example, this is all vacant. But uh, pulling in the dummy data, it's just assigned random data here. Okay, so we're happy with with the, the fact that things have been pulled through. So now we can, likewise, using the identify tool, you can click on an individual polygon and pull through data for that. Um, and just show you how the labeling tool works quickly as well. So we can also say uh, we want to label joint layers. We do want to show our labels. We're going to label on the CAD text, which is our earth number. We are going to use a buffer. I like buffers. We say apply. Oh, there we go. It's already done. So now our earth numbers are coming through and showing through with our data. So how much time? Uh, how, how long have we been doing? Okay, 11 minutes. That's quite long. So that's yeah. So that's um, that's how you can use QGIS, um, pulling through CAD data uh, and linking through uh, property ownership data, etc. It's uh, maybe a, a typical um, example of as a town planner you might use. Um, and then of course also the, the previous section which I left out for this example was was the geoprocessing side of things where you're identifying pieces of land which are um, maybe sensitive or, or cannot be developed so must be excluded uh, and you'll see in this example that the, the planners have gone in and have only developed in areas where there aren't there isn't vegetation or, uh, or a river or within a certain distance of a river so that's that's a geoprocessing side of things and, and that's that's something that we can also cover in the tutorials um, but yeah that's it just a, a brief uh, overview of QGIS and the layout and how similar it is to the to the other GIS, uh, GIS desktop solutions. Okay, hope I haven't bored you too much, but uh, if you're interested, give me a shout, um, give me a call and we can uh, discuss things further. Alright, cheers.